It's time. Hey, what's up, everybody? Again, we are making our way through the list of competitors at the Deepwaters Invitational. And the Deepwaters Invitational, in case you forgot, and why would you forget? I don't know why. August 12th, coming up in San Diego at the beautiful Broadway Pier. And uh, this is a truly nice moment. I get to talk with one of my good friends. I train with her. I think she's uh, the ish. And uh, if you don't know her, get to know her right now. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Bree Stick. Bree, how are you doing today? Hey, guys. Uh, good. I'm pretty tired, but um, overall. Yeah, you just told me you woke up from a nap on the floor, but you don't look <laughs> like at all like you've been sleeping. Got uh, the, the hat on, like, <laughs> you, know. you you have no idea. So where are you right now? For people who don't know, um, I'm up. I'm kind of off of a highway near Santa Barbara. Uh, we're covering another station. It's it's probably hot and humid down south too, huh? It's a little bit, but uh, what do you do? You say you're at a station. What kind of station, Bree? A fire station. So I work for the Forest Service, um, wildland firefighters, and basically uh, we're on shift today, and we're extended because of the extra. It's extra hot today. Yeah. So yeah, we're covering. This isn't my home. <clears throat> so yeah, kind of out of my element. Still just took a nap on the floor. We like working out or on call at this point. That's pretty dope, and I love the fact that this is what you're. Doing when you're not training jujitsu obsessively. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this is the big gig. This is the one that pays. Uh, now I want to caution our viewers right now. If you are watching this and Bree suddenly has to be whisked away, just know she's out there and she's probably saving somebody's life. <laughs> I mean, hey, I guess that's what we do, huh? <laughs> yeah. Now, 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 Bri, I have so many questions, but let's start with the very beginning. You know, how did you get involved in jiu-jitsu? Um, jiu-jitsu, for me, it was more of um, my pops kind of throwing me in different sports and stuff when I was growing up. And I started more with like a Muay Thai boxing type of deal at a local gym. Um, and I did some nogi. I went to high school. I ended up wrestling in high school and just loving martial arts as a whole. Um, so it started for me like well, when I was a teenager, and I've just been hooked ever since and always kept it in my life regardless of what's going on in my career or school or whatever. It's always, it's always been the passion, and I'm just doing all the other things you got to do to have a career, you know. What were the other sports you were playing? Um, in high school, I was on the water polo team uh, and then the swim team. I did some volleyball prior to that, and... That's, re that's really it as like far as competitive sports, everything else I kind of dabbled in. But I've always been a, like a sports sports kid, you know? Lifting weights, I was super into lifting weights for a long time. <laughs> CrossFit. Did you find that all of those sports uh, lent themselves to jiu-jitsu when you started making more of that transition? <laughs> yeah, as in... Um, where if I was doing water polo or swim, I would be thinking about wrestling or, or jiu-jitsu, like wishing that they had like a jiu-jitsu team or a boxing team at school. Mm. Uh, that yeah, wasn't, you know, wasn't the case. So I would think all the sports kind of made me rule out everything but jiu-jitsu and, and wrestling. And, and, you know, I do kickboxing and stuff now, and, and I still love it. I don't know what it is. It's just it's, I've always had that draw, like the martial arts theme for sure. Interesting. I've always wanted to know. So, what was the moment you knew you were truly addicted to jujitsu? Because, like I said, you come from a wrestling background. You start to make that transition, and wrestlers love wrestling, and you still do. I know it's still deep in your heart, but you're obsessed with jujitsu. When did you know that you were truly, truly obsessed with it? Um, I can actually give you like a moment, a moment in time where I was like, yeah, I jujitsu and and wrestling and all that over everything. Um, it was when I was on the water polo team. I, I was on the team freshman and sophomore year, college, or sorry, high school. And basically they wanted to put me on varsity uh, the following year, my junior year. But wrestling winner and women's water polo is winner also. So I was doing very well. And I played a little on varsity my sophomore year, which was like my second year in the sport. And I'm, I had that pull of the martial arts, you know, doing it in the, win in the summer. Uh, dabbling with wrestling, my family's all wrestlers, so I've always had that um, theme in my life. And I had to go and make a decision where I'd tell my coach that I'm quitting for wrestling. So, 
yeah, I just remember being at practice and I was like always thinking about boxing and jujitsu and wrestling. And I was like, man, I just got to go with it. And this was actually around the time that like Gina Carano was starting to fight on like strike force. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing her and some of the other girls cyborg. And I was like, Whoa, like girls actually do this. You know, they actually do this like in the big league. Um, and in that, in that theme. So I was like, yeah, that was the moment I had to go to my coach and be like, Hey, I'm quitting quitting to do wrestling you know he's like are you kidding me uh he was so mad but yeah that, i was 16 16 hmm. years old that was the turning point for sure that's so awesome that's such a great thing that you can remember the point that you destroyed your coach's dream <laughs> and went I, to go upon your own i remember like walking down the, the concrete like super slow like looking at my feet like just so scared to talk to him because he was gnarly he'd, like yell at us all the time and and he you know, cared a lot about us, and water polo is super uh, hard sport also. You know, we're swimming, you have to tread water. It's kind of like MMA while you're swimming. Yeah. And it was good, and I and I liked it, but I knew it just wasn't enough of, like, the fighting world, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're walking over there, looking at my feet, walking down the pool. I'm like, oh, my God. And then, yeah. <laughs> if I, I probably would have gone to college for water polo. Really? Wow. It's, it's totally different. Uh, world for sure well i think you made the right choice because you provide a lot of fantastic uh yeah. clash whenever you come to jiu-jitsu like i know firsthand that you really you do have a passion for it you really love it you really like to train as many disciplines of it as possible so every time i see you you know you're somebody who you want to stand on the feet you want to get better on the ground you know, in this boxing element too. Like I've never seen you box, but I know your gym, your street sports, uh, Simi Valley. I know you've got amazing people. I just got the chance to to meet Rich uh, Leroy, if you would. And uh, dude, he's badass. And seeing him and Vince and, and Drew and all those really, really cool people there on top of the great jiu-jitsu you get from Kenny. Like that's a good home gym to have. Yeah, so you came on my favorite day. It's always been Monday, uh, Monday 6.30, we do Muay Thai and then sparring. And then nogi, mm -hmm. once a week with nogi. So Monday's always been my favorite. Um, I used to go in there and, and dabble in the sparring and stuff. And I don't know. Down the road, I want to fight for sure. I just uh, I need to be able to train enough. I think. And with, with jobs like this, it's so hard. And I don't want to go in there and just get knocked out by somebody. And, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. You want to give it your full all. Like you, if you're going to commit yeah. to it, you want to really be able to take some time off and go and. You know, the nice part is, I mean, if you look at Stipe Miocic, he's somebody, active oh. duty. Yep. What's up with that? You enjoy him? Uh, in, what is it, Ohio, I believe? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he, I know. He has a belt, and I was like, man, that, it is possible. You know, I love to see people that have a career, um, and a tough career at that. You know, service, 24 hours a day, getting held over, dealing with gnarly stuff. It's like. I, I really respect people that have service careers and can still pursue things at a high level. It just I just know how much like work it takes, you know. Absolutely. So I'm gonna try try to get on a department and uh, you know in the city, ideally like down south San Diego, so I can train with like amazing people. <laughs> um, yeah, I just gotta keep grinding, you know. So let me ask this: You mentioned service. That's a really important thing for you, Barbara. How did you get involved in wanting to go into that route? What, what was the appeal of wanting to do that as a career? Um, I mean, it, people always say, I want to help people, you know? And it's true. I, I've always done, um, I've always just had that, like, wanting to help people, uh, wanting to be in medical. You know, I wanted to be a doctor originally, and I did some clinical hours and things like that, and I just, I can't be in the hospital. Like, I can't be in those white walls every day. It's just not mm. for me. But um, I was a lifeguard. I was a swim teacher. I was a personal trainer. And everything was about wanting to do better on somebody. Um, and, and then getting paid, you know, getting paid to help people. Like, what more can you like, ask for, you know, as far as fulfillment in life? Um, so, yeah, it started, started for me. I was 17 and a half. I enrolled in an EMT program. And I, I kind of, I think I kind of broke the rules because you're supposed to be 18. <laughs> yeah. But the day I graduated was like a week after my birthday, so I would have been 18 when the class ended. So they let me enroll. Uh, I got my EMT. I've been working um, different events, and I've been working on the ambulance. I used to do 911 down in LA, 
and then uh, I went to medic school, got my medic license. So uh, I worked a little bit in the, this winter as a paramedic, and uh, I was doing um, school for fire tech. This is my second season out here doing wildland. Um, so yeah, it's just the rest is history, you know. <laughs> and it's funny because I don't know if people know this, but a lot of times at tournaments, you might be in the background, you might be uh, serving as the medic, which yep. is really awesome because. I don't know how many medics I necessarily see who go out and compete and then they'll be like, where's the medic? And it's like, oh, that's me too. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, real quick. I'm sorry I broke you, but I'll fix you too. <laughs> yeah. I, I was working one of the dreams and I was like, I was doing brackets, running the table, and then somebody's hurt. I'm like, Bree, get over there. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> but I like it because I, I can relate to the, the jujitsu. You know, I know the injuries. Um, it's easier for me. You know, yeah, yeah. like, oh, you're, let's just tape that or sit out or you need a hospital. <laughs> well, it's also kind of so weird. I, I always feel like it's odd explaining to people in the medical profession how it is you break things in jujitsu where you're like, oh, yes, I voluntarily chose to train with somebody who was going to rip my knee off and it yep. did happen. So, mm -hmm. oops. Every time you go to the doctor for an injury, their solution is to not not do what you're doing. Right? And that's not, not happening. I'm like, I don't think you get it. Like, if I don't have martial arts in my life, it's like, I don't know. I feel like I'm not even happy. I'm just yeah. like, I can't be like an average person, you know? Yeah, no, I hear I that. At with humans all the time, or I'm <laughs> <laughs> or, I don't know. So, Bree, let me ask this, because you, you now are a, a purple belt, you are an active competitor, and things change as you continue to go on. So, obviously, you get involved in jiu-jitsu. But what, what is it that keeps you challenged, or what is it that is, like, your motivation now at this point in your martial arts career? Motivation to, to compete or train or both? Both. Um, I mean, it's, it's pure love, dude. I don't, I don't know how to explain any other way. Uh, I don't know. When you compete, you're, you're challenging yourself. You know, you're not just, like, just like with anything in life, you know, are you going to you're going to just walk by and, and take the easy route and be comfortable all the time, or are you going to do crazy stuff that's going to challenge you, change you? Um, I feel like every time I compete, it's it's just like it changes me as a person a little bit every time, I think. You learn, continually learning, um, doing things that you didn't think you could do, and that's actually this job also. I, we've been pushed so hard on some of the PTs and, and things like that and just the conditions, and I'm like, there's been there's days where I'm like I don't I don't know if I can do this, hmm. you know, in my head. And then you you do do it or you accomplish it or you get up the hill or whatever it is. And it's like it's just that feeling of of being of accomplishing something, you know, hmm. and doing what you never thought you could do. And I think that that's a big thing for jujitsu. Is like I just feel like I I feel like it's I have to compete now for some reason. Hmm. Well, and speaking of competition, we're now making our way over to the Deep Waters Invitational. You are one of the eight women who is participating. Uh, I gotta ask this: There are so many competitions. You yourself uh, are in so many different things. Why compete with us? Why compete with us at the USSGL? Well, um, first of all, a lot of people I, I care for and my good buddies. They they're you know running it and they're really passionate about it. So I feel like you know you support people. You support where you came from. You know. Um, that and the rules are awesome you know sub only no gi like i love that i love no gi i love sub only um yeah that's really all i can say you know those, those things are, are perfect perfect tournament uh you guys are breaking all the rules you know it's gonna be in san diego on a pier i don't know part of it's gonna be on the aircraft carrier or next to it or something we're gonna have a couple little matches on, on the aircraft carrier but we're mainly going to be on the pier. And I don't want to give too much away about the aircraft carrier. But I will tell you our competition for the Deep Waters Invitational, it's going to take place on the pier. And it's going to have a great setting. You know, we're working to get, like, DJs and cocktails, acai. We want a whole, like, community vibe to, like, come in and see. And we're so lucky that we get to be a part of this giant event. And maybe you can explain a little bit of this. But when they put together wrestling events, especially a spectacle like that, it's huge. And for them to include us on that and give us the opportunity to show what it is that we love and what makes our sports so cool and be a part of that, 
um, mm -hmm. you know, we, we wanted to do it upright. So we, we contacted the athletes, much like yourself, who we said, these people bring it. They, they have the heart, they have that passion, and they'll, they'll give you what you came for. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys are going out there and you're putting it in a setting, it's outdoors, it's in a, a highly populated community of San Diego. Um, people are super open minded there, you know, so I, I think it's, it's pretty genius overall, all around. Well, it's you know, all me. I mean, uh, we all know that, but. Uh, What's that? It's all me. The whole genius part, it, that's all me. Everything else that's terrible goes to the other guys, but the genius part goes to me. Uh, Bree, <laughs> I want to ask this though. You know, one of the things people may not know about you is earlier this year you ended up being uh, the person who earned the slots for both Gi and No Gi to compete and represent the United States. Uh, you did it for the grappling trials that was earlier in April. Tell us a little bit about that because I think that's a spectacular opportunity. Yeah, I mean, uh, just registering for that, I was like, I get to compete and possibly represent the USA in a, you know, so internationally, like in a foreign country. Sorry, I'm getting attacked by flies. <laughs> um, and it, if you know me, I'm like super patriotic. Show you know, me your glasses right now. I don't know if they've seen your glasses, but I think it's a small indicator. Like, this is not a fabrication. <laughs> this is Brie at her Real. most. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Everyone keeps telling me to do, I should do a blue and a white. Do my red. I wouldn't I disagree with them. I mean, especially once you get down to Azerbaijan in October. Hey, I know I got to be careful because there's people that don't like Americans. So that's I'll be labeling fair. myself if I do that. But. That's fair. Well, you could do it at the Deepwaters Invitational. We got no problem with that. We're all going to be pro-America there. Do my signature braids. We'll see. We'll see <laughs> if I, I, I'm going to be working like every day up until that day. So That's true. Yeah, so you, you're you're competing for this big thing. Tell us about the spectacle of it because um, from our experience, we found that so many people didn't really know about it. But right. uh, the folks who are like, it, it, we're talking you and Josh Hinger and a number of, of really solid grapplers from kind of all around the world, like a lot of MMA practitioners and black belts, um, really right. high caliber folks are going to represent the United States. So what happens next? How does that go? Um, so yeah, as far as right now, what is it? We're, we just started August. Um, I got the email pretty much, you know, RSVP, or are you taking the slot? So I'll, I'm going to be doing 58 kilos, D and no D. Nice. Yeah, and I, I said, yes, I'm in, and I got my passport. So we're going mid-October, and everyone's just kind of on their own to train and stuff, you know. Um, just be on weight and, and train and that's really it and then we're gonna all fly out and they they're taking care of the reservations and stuff like that but nice. I have to come up, we all have to come up with our airfare and I, we're gonna have to pay for the hotel I think we're getting gear it's about to it USA gear um, but that's that's the way it is you know with like Olympic sports is if they don't have sponsors and stuff everybody pays their way for years until they you know make a name for themselves well, so. some sports I think we're a little bit rougher but I mean oh, that's yeah. Part of the reason why, you know, uh, you see so many GoFundMes for people who just are yep. lazy. <laughs> but when you have yeah. these competitors who, you know, you've got a full-time job, you are, you're you out there right now, you're on call, getting ready at a moment's notice to go do your work, to go help and give service back. When you're not doing that, you're training and you're trying to be at the caliber that you need to compete on a world level. And then you got to make the cash for that. So you create a GoFundMe and we highly encourage you guys if you want to go and support somebody who loves America and who will represent it with all of their heart, I highly implore you to do that. And it's not just that, but, you know, sign you up for privates or for seminars. Like, Bree's jiu-jitsu is very solid. And she is so passionate about making people better that uh, I can't say enough good things. So if you do get that opportunity, I, I highly implore you out there. Um, and here's the worst case scenario. You want to help your friend. And there's nothing wrong with helping a friend and being like, yo, Brie, I believe in you and I believe in your jiu-jitsu. So uh, that's my little plug for, for Brie. We'll be mentioning it on the broadcast as well because uh, now it's not just her. She's representing us. So it's not just you know us doing this here. Hopefully Brie wins our cash prize so that she can put a little bit of that away uh, to doing that. But it's going to be a $1,000 cash prize. 
Um, Bree, I want to ask this for you though. What is the the difference in in the the, the rules for this competition? Because it is a little different. We do sub only, but they're gonna have points, correct? Yeah, um, you know, just like IBJJF points, but it, it is it is very different. It's more it's more wrestling based, mm. and it makes sense because uh, USA Grappling is a branch off of USA Wrestling. That's probably why I knew about the tournament, and I saw it on like my ads on my online like every day you know <laughs> uh, because i do follow usa wrestling and, and all that so um they are it's i gotta double check on on the international tournament level um but the rounds at the trials were five minutes only and um if you pulled guard they'd give a takedown two to the other person which i love because i'm totally down to stand and and uh bully people no, <laughs> Yeah, so if, if you pull guard or go to your back or whatever, the other person's going to get a takedown too. So, it, yeah, it, it was more of a draw for wrestlers um, and people, and maybe judo, you know, judo players also. Mm. Uh, there's just, it's a different rule scheme as far as like passing and um, side control and things like that. It's like three points if you just get to side control. Mm. It's not like a, and then, um, it's not a pass and then a control. It's like if you're if you get here, so you could get to like a side control off of the takedown. It's like a two and then a three. <laughs> well, it, there's very specific rules. I think you get sub attempt one point, kind of like Naga. Mm. Um, but I like it. I, I really like the rule set. Absolutely. So, I know it speaks to the wrestler heart and you. I'm always going with the sub, but. Absolutely, and you you were able to accomplish getting some subs at uh, the trials as well. So in that format, you proved pretty adept at that. So yeah, all my forward. I love it. All right, Bree. Now let's do this. Uh, do you have any sponsors we need to take care of? Anybody that we can go ahead and shout out? Yes, sir. Um, so always shouting out to Street Sports, Simi Valley, all the street sports. You know their love and support. You know they've been there for me since I started. Um, Nutra Shop, Simi Valley is my, my home little shop. They were my first sponsor. Um, we got Nutra Shop Northridge also. They're helping me out. Reverse Gear out of Hawaii. The Los Angeles Jiu Jitsu Club. My brother's over there. Um, good people. Verbal Tap Podcast, obviously. You guys are amazing as well. Um, yeah, and that's really it. And then I can shout out my social media if that's right. Absolutely do that. Yes, yeah, so uh, I'm doing most of, most of my business, I guess, off of Instagram. So B R E J J three J J. You can message me on there. I'm absolutely down for seminars, uh, super fights, whatever it may be, um, privates. I love to do all that stuff. So uh, and Facebook, sorry, Bree Stick B R E S T I K K. You can add me on there. Also. That's sick, Bree. I want you right now, as we close on out. I want to remind people of one thing and then I'm going to ask you to do one thing. But I'm going to remind the people this. So what we're trying to do is if you guys want to come support Bree down in San Diego, it's pretty simple. Uh, you can buy tickets to observe the Deepwaters Invitational. And when you do, we implore you to go ahead and do on the drop down menu. Go ahead and say that you're there to support Bree Stick. And when you do that, we kick back a little bit of money to the athletes. So we're doing our best to give a little bit back to the athletes who uh, cool. Do the support and to uh, you know who who are there and who believe in us and who believe in, in uh, you know supporting our art as well. So we're doing that, but we also are telling you guys if you compete the next day at the SD Midway Open and you want to go ahead and see the Deep Waters Invitational, if you compete with us the next day, attendance to the Deep Waters Invitational is free ninety nine. So. Get out there and compete if you want to compete, and then you can support your friend Bree. But if you don't want to compete, that's cool too. Just go ahead and purchase the ticket, and make sure you put Bree Stick's name on there so that we can get a little bit of uh, the moolahs to be uh, putting down some money so that she could go to Azerbaijan. Now, Bree? Yes, sir. I said I was going to ask you to do something. Okay. Here's what I'm asking you to do. I want you to look directly into the camera right this second, right now, and I want you to say... What people can expect from you at the Deep Waters Invitational on August 12th. Okay. Um, you can expect me giving it my all, like always, and 
some flashy, uh, maybe some good takedowns, some good subs. Um, yeah, say hi to me. I'm always nice. I look intimidating, people think, but I'm nice. <laughs> it really is. And, yeah, I don't know, a good time. You know, win or lose, I'm, I'm there to support and uh, hang out and talk to me, we'll train, whatever. True to life, always. I love it, Bree. Thank you so much for uh, chatting with us today. We look forward to seeing you on August 12th. Awesome. Thank you, Raph. Good work out there, guys. That's the hardest I've worked yet in a competition class. Guys, you know what would be insane? If someone made a tournament outside on the ocean. What? And what if it had like a party vibe? Like a DJ, some acai, maybe some cocktails? What? It would have to be on the ocean by an aircraft carrier. What? Eric. Nobody would ever do that. Of course they would. No, they wouldn't. Nobody would ever uh, make that kind of a tournament. That is a pretty crazy I don't, idea. I don't think so, man. Eric, you have terrible ideas.